Every morning I have pretty much the same routine. Wake up, brush my teeth with some sparkly mint toothpaste, use an exfoliating wash on my face. It feels tingly and fresh, so I never took the time to notice many of the products I use are filled with plastic. That's right, plastic. For years, I've been washing tiny bits of hard, colorful plastic down the drain without even realizing it. They're called microbeads. Perhaps nobody knows more about them than Anna Cummins and Marcus Erickson. Our relationship really was, was born from trash. Anna and Marcus have spent years sailing around the world studying the effects plastic has on marine life. Their Culver City garage is filled with all kinds of samples they've collected from their expeditions at sea. Here's just some of what they've pulled from our oceans. Plastic umbrella handles. We find lots of these. These are solid, you know, almost solid plastic. And colorful cigarette lighters that birds thought were food. And these were pulled out of bird stomachs. They're so obsessed with plastic, they even got married wearing it. Their nonprofit Five Gyres is named after the five ocean spirals where large amounts of trash circulate. Now they're focused on what they believe could become a very large global issue caused by very small pieces of plastic found in products like the ones on my bathroom shelf. We've been looking at one category of microplastics that, that are microbeads, and these are the tiny beads that are put as exfoliants into a lot of personal care products. Products like facial scrubs, body washes, even toothpaste have microbeads, sparkly bits of tiny plastic. You won't see the word microbeads on the ingredients label, but you will see polyethylene. It's an unfamiliar word to many of us, yet it's the most common type of plastic in the world, used to make things like bottles, packaging, and trash bags. I looked at the ingredients on the facial scrub that I use. First ingredient, water. Second ingredient, polyethylene. There you go. So that's what you're looking for in the label, that's polyethylene. It. Polyethylene or polypropylene. How is it possible that microbeads would be the second ingredient in a product? That's a lot of beads. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of beads in one tube of your product. Hundreds of thousands of microbeads in a single tube? Anna showed us just how many microbeads were in a few squeezes of clean and clear facial scrub. I just dumped the whole thing in, and this is what we have left behind. Oh, wow. That's what we're talking about. Wait, so that's all plastic? That is plastic. Anna says you should also read the label on your toothpaste box because that extra whitening paste could come with extra plastic. We have heard from many dentists is that they're now finding them lodged in people's gums. This issue is so new that no one has looked at, are we ingesting microbeads when we're brushing our teeth? Chances are, you know, you're swallowing some of these. That can't be a good thing to be swallowing plastic. But what Marcus and Anna are really focused on is what happens after these plastic bits go down the drain and into rivers, streams, and the ocean. The U.S. is flushing roughly 300 tons of microbeads into our waters every year. 300 tons? Yeah. To make matters worse, all kinds of chemicals are in the ocean. Pesticides, flame retardants, and heavy metals. And ocean studies have shown those chemicals cling to plastic, making microbeads even more toxic to fish and coral. Actually, most scientists agree that microplastics in the ocean are, should be labeled as hazardous waste. So you have these little fragments that have been shown to be ingested by small organisms, by fish. Say, uh, a fish this size could eat maybe 50 of these little particles. And then that fish will then be eaten by larger fish, say 50 to 100 of those smaller <coughs> fish, so that the chemicals inside uh, those fish become more and more concentrated up the food chain. So fish eat those plastics, we eat the fish, and the fear is those chemicals end up inside of us. Exactly. Wow. Marcus and Anna launched a campaign against microbeads and collected more than 15,000 signatures, getting the attention of companies like Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, L'Oreal and The Body Shop, who have said they'll begin phasing out polyethylene microbeads over the next few years. But some say that's not good enough. Mark Gold is the director of UCLA's Institute of Sustainability and the Environment. He believes a microbeads ban should become law. We've seen the environmental harm that other plastics have caused. You don't need a whole bunch of studies to assume that the same sort of thing is going to happen with microbeads. Now there's a lot of pushback from industry, as you can gather, on, on this sort of legislation, but it's just uh, something that has to happen before it becomes a big environmental problem. 
Keith Chrisman of the American Chemistry Council represents plastic manufacturers. I interviewed him by satellite. Legislation's already been introduced in, in over a dozen states. He says some in the plastics industry support a phase out of microbeads made from polyethylene. Plastic shouldn't be in the environment and in our waterways. Uh, we certainly agree with that. We agree very strongly with that. That's why we've supported the legislation to, to phase out plastic microbeads. Would you support language in the bill that banned all kinds of plastic? The only ones that would not potentially be phased out would be ones that might be uh, biodegradable in either wastewater treatment plant or, or in waterways. Keith says in the future they may develop plastics that dissolve, but for the time being, no microbeads are biodegradable. My understanding at this point, um, there have not been developed uh, plastics that would meet the criteria for biodegradable in marine uh, waterways today. So I don't think that there's a, a plastic microbead today that, that meets that criteria. Some environmentalists are concerned that if you phase out only one kind of plastic, that leaves the door open for other kinds of plastics to move in. There's an argument now uh, the plastic industry wants to replace uh, microbeads made of polyethylene polypropylene with microbeads made out of uh, bioplastic, PLA which has all the same harmful effects in the ocean as, as polyethylene does. There shouldn't be any plastic microbeads, period. So it, it, be very, very careful of legislation that actually names the specific type of plastic that it's banning. Both sides agree microbeads can't be recycled and they aren't biodegradable. That leaves critics wondering why they exist at all. And that's really why we focused on this microbeads issue for the last for the last two years. This is a clear example of a product that has no recovery plan. It's the most uh, egregious example of poor design. Mark says there are plenty of essential uses for plastic, but a few seconds of body scrubbing isn't one of them. Those microbeads was one of those inventions. Makes no sense whatsoever. There's anything like that that basically can stay in the marine environment for centuries. Um, doesn't really make sense when it has such a, a, a short time frame for use. Let's focus on, on better products that don't get in the ocean in the first place. Until that happens, these products are still on store and bathroom shelves, and tiny bits of plastic are still washing down the drain and into the ocean. I'm Derek Shore for SoCal Connected. To read more about water's tiny trash problem, go to SoCalConnected.org microbeads.